friends good morning welcome to this episode of daybreak god's mercies are new every morning so let's praise god through this song i reach to you the one who makes the blind i see breaks the chains of sickness with authority restoring what was broken so it may fly again Jesus my heart is captivated my heart is captivated lord by you alone captured by the awesomeness of you alone built by the grace and mercy you have shown i stand that indeed was a spiritually uplifting song certain messages and stories have a lots to teach us so let's hear to one such message good morning and for our reflection this morning i'd like to take a little short passage from the Gospel of Mark, 
chapter 15, verses 33. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabatani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, being human, we go through suffering. Suffering is so much a part and parcel of who we are as human beings. And we know that suffering is the result of the sin of Adam and Eve when they chose to disobey God. The consequence of their sin, the consequence of their disobedience was suffering. Pain and death came into the world. And so often we grumble and complain when we are faced with suffering. How could God allow my mother to die of cancer? Where was God when my only son died of a terrible bike accident? Could not God allow my husband to live for 10 more days to witness the wedding of our eldest daughter? How could God allow my wife to walk out of marriage after 20 years? These are questions we have often asked. We begin to wonder why? Why me? Why me, Lord? My dear friends, these are age-old questions. And this question was not something that you and I have asked. But people like Job in the Bible have asked the same questions. Why do innocent people suffer? I can understand a wicked man's suffering, but why do people who go to church every day, who pray, suffer from cancer or heart disease or meet with a terrible bike accident? My dear friends, all I can tell you is suffering is not a problem to be solved, but a mystery to be lived. Suffering, my dear friends, is not something you and I go through. Even Jesus went through on the cross. When he cried out from the cross saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabatani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Even Jesus on the cross felt at that agonizing moment being led down by his Father. Dear friends, suffering is a moment we all go through like Jesus on the cross. But Jesus did something beautiful on the cross. He not only transformed suffering, but he has, through the, through the power of the cross, has conquered our little crosses, our little sufferings that we go through. So therefore, suffering is not something which is a result of sin, which is a result of a curse. Now, through the power of Jesus' death and resurrection, we can look at suffering as something beautiful, as something that Jesus has conquered through the power of the cross. When we go through suffering, my dear friends, sometimes we don't understand what is happening in our lives. It is like this Persian carpet. It looks so beautiful on the surface, but when you see the rear side of it, you see all kinds of threads going jigsaw puzzle. It does not make sense. When you're going through suffering, my dear friends, you're looking at the rear side of this beautiful Persian carpet. You're seeing all threads going like a jigsaw puzzle. It does not make sense. But actually God, through your suffering, is actually weaving a beautiful picture on the other side of the carpet. In due time, God will show you the other side of the carpet and say to you, when you were going through suffering, this was what was happening on, in your life. A beautiful picture. Things will fall in place. In time, God will reveal why we went through what we went through. Suffering is like a purifying fire, like how gold is tested, refined and purified in fire. All of us, my dear friends, through the suffering are purified, are refined, are strengthened to be more like Jesus. The Lord is extending an invitation for you and for me. Whatever our little sufferings are today, the Lord is saying to you and to me, 
take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. Are we going to sit down and grumble and complain? Or are we, like Jesus, joyfully take our little crosses and follow him, knowing fully well that we are not alone, but he gives us the strength and the grace to face our little crosses. For Jesus has conquered the cross, has conquered sin and death, and we are more than victorious in Jesus Christ. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm sure this message was an enriching one. All saints were just people like us, but the only difference was they had trust in God. So let us hear to one such story of a saint. St. Margaret Clitheroe was born in Middleton, England in 1555 of Protestant parents. Possessed of good looks and full of wit and merriment, she was a charming personality. In 1571, she married John Clitheroe, a well-to-do butcher to whom she bore two children, and a few years later, she entered the Catholic Church. Her husband's family was Catholic, although he had taken on the state religion of England long before he married. She was a kind neighbor and hard-working mother, but there was more to Margaret Clitheroe than just a busy life of work and care for others. You wouldn't believe what was going on in her house. There were laws restricting the practice of Catholicism in England in those days. A few years before Margaret's time, King Henry VIII had rejected the authority of the Pope and had broken away from the Catholic Church. Now Henry's daughter, Queen Elizabeth, was the head of this new church called the Church of England, and under her rule, being a Catholic was a crime. It was illegal to teach children about the Catholic faith. It was illegal to go to Mass. It was illegal to let a Catholic priest come inside your house. Margaret Clitheroe broke all those laws. Her home became a stopping off place for priests and Mass was offered secretly there. She hired a Catholic tutor to teach her children the faith, and other children also came to her home to learn. Whenever she got word that a priest would be coming to town, Margaret would let him stay in a secret room in her home, and she would contact her Catholic friends. They would gather at her house and then take out the vestments, prayer books, and candles that Margaret kept in a locked case and they would attend the Mass which the priest offered right there in the dark of night. Her husband went along with her interests even when she sent their oldest son to France to be educated where he could practice his Catholic faith in peace. Not only was she devout, she was also a zealous promoter of the faith, converting others and bringing back backsliders to the practice of their religion. Meanwhile, the laws against the Catholic faith became more harsh and the government was determined that Catholicism should be stamped out in Yorkshire, where it was especially strong. Everyone loved St. Margaret Clitheroe, and even her servants knew that she hid fugitive priests, but no one betrayed her. She was a good housewife, capable in business, dearly loved by her husband, whose only regret was that his wife could not attend church with him. Her husband was summoned by the authorities to explain why his oldest son had gone abroad, and the Clitheroe house was searched. A Flemish boy, from fear, revealed the hiding place of the priests where chalices and vestments were kept. Margaret was arrested and imprisoned by hostile authorities, along with a neighboring housewife who had attended Mass at her home. Margaret's only concern was that her family was safe. The government tried every means in an attempt to make her deny her faith, but the holy woman stood firm. She was brought to trial and would not plead, her only statement being, Having made no offense, I need no trial. If she had been tried, her family would have been called as witnesses against her, and she was determined that this should not happen. She couldn't imagine putting her husband, her sons, or her daughter in that terrible position. So without a trial, Margaret was convicted of being a Catholic and sentenced to death. Reluctantly, the judge sentenced her to be pressed to death. 
A bizarre death sentence in which the condemned was placed under a door or similar object and rocks piled on the door until the person was crushed to death. Before her execution, Margaret spent her time in prison praying and remembering how much God loved her and how God would love her forever. Because of this, she wasn't afraid, even though the death that awaited her would be horrible, painful, and slow. On March 25, 1586, she was laid in a shallow pit in the ground. As she lay in the pit praying, a heavy door was laid on top of her. Slowly, enormous rocks were placed on top of the door, one by one. As the door grew heavier, her bones were broken, and she died within 15 minutes, her body crushed. But before she died, Margaret whispered her final words, Jesu, 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 have mercy on me. She was only 30 years old and was canonized in 1970. The humanity and holiness of this servant of God can be readily glimpsed in her words to a friend when she learned of her condemnation. The sheriffs have said that I am going to die this coming Friday, and I feel the weakness of my flesh, which is troubled at this news, but my spirit rejoices greatly. For the love of God, pray for me, and ask all good people to do likewise. Her feast is celebrated on March 26th. This saint's life teaches us that through everyday fidelity, we are given the strength to face the great crisis. Saint Margaret Clitheroe did not expect to die a martyr, but she was faithful in the everyday practice of her religion. She was true to her faith in every decision which she made, including her decision to invite priests and friends to Holy Mass in her home when it was outlawed, hiding priests and the articles needed to say the Mass, and sending her son out of England to study in France where he would be free to practice Catholicism. When the great crisis came, where she was told to abandon her faith or die, she was ready. Let's follow the footsteps of the saint and learn to depend on the word of God to strengthen ourselves. Let's listen to the promise verse of today. Praise the Lord. Dear friends, welcome to the daily reflections on the word of God, the daily bread. As we are in the Lenten season, we are reflecting on the passages the church has prescribed for each day's reading in the liturgical calendar. And today we are presented with Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the reckoning, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. And as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and payment be to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Lord, have Patience with me, and I'll pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But that same servant, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and besought him, Have patience with me, and I'll pay you. He refused and went out and put him in prison till he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you besought me, and should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord delivered him to the jailers, till he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. 
This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Dear friends, Lent is a time of reconciliation. Forgiving and asking for forgiveness. Usually the Catholics go to confession very often during this season, especially the last few days. And the confession is confessing one's sins and getting pardon from God, the sacrament of confession. And today we are presented with a passage, a parable that makes us aware of what it means to forgive and to be forgiven. The passage is so familiar, the parable is so familiar, but the contrast is so great two debtors. So before I come to the passage itself, you should know the Gospel of Matthew has five sermons. Chapter 5 to 7 is the sermon, the new covenant. Chapter 10 is the missionary discourse, the second sermon. And the third sermon, chapter 13, explains or describes the nature of the kingdom of God in parables. And here we have the fourth sermon, that is the sermon on the church. What should be the dealings? What should be the characteristics of the disciples? And finally, we have 24, 25, the eschatological discourse. Here, the fourth sermon of Jesus, he is telling how should his disciples behave? What should be the nature of their life? And this is the, as presented as an answer to the question of Peter. How long, how often should I forgive? Jesus said, without end. Whenever your neighbor has offended you and asked you forgiveness, forgive him. And the parable is also very, very strange. A person who caught as a debtor to the king 10,000 talents, an unimaginable amount. A talent is 34.5 kilos of gold or a huge amount of money. The amount you will come to understand when you make a comparison. For example, the Romans were collecting 100 talents for taxes for year from Palestine. 100 talents as the, the taxes of one year of a whole country. And this is 100 times more. 100 times 100 is makes a 10,000 times. So huge an amount. So this is not an ordinary accountant or a minister. He seems to be a local, I don't know what kind of a king he is, whatever. And this person can never pay that debt. And he tells, I will give you back. But then the king forgives everything. And then the contrast, when he does not uh, forgive a cause servant who owed him only a hundred denarii. And you should know denarii, 6,000 denarii makes a talent. 6,000 denarii. And this man was forgiven 10,000 talents and he has only a hundred denarii. And he doesn't forgive. So now comes the conclusion. The king becomes angry. Because this man who has received such a great forgiveness is not ready to forgive. Now, Jesus draws the conclusion, unless you forgive your neighbor with all your heart, you will not be forgiven or you will not be able to receive forgiveness. If there is any rancor, any lack of love, any misunderstanding, angry anger in your heart, the mercy of God cannot enter your heart. If you want to receive God's mercy, remove this obstacle. So love your neighbor. Only by forgiving others, we can receive forgiveness. The forgiveness of God is there, available for everybody to take. But first prepare the heart. Open the heart. And opening the heart means you forgive. So this is a very concrete, practical suggestion the ACC is making. And this has made us to pray. Forgive our sins as we have forgiven our sinners, our debtors. So if you want to receive forgiveness, we have to forgive. No other way. And I think that is one thing we have to learn again and again. Between people in the family, brothers and sisters, siblings, in the society, in the parish, and also in the world overall. Unless you are ready to forgive, there will be no peace among the nations also. So this is a parable that is valid for everybody on every level. So let us ask the Lord for the, the power to forgive others so that we may be able to receive God's forgiveness. Heavenly Father, Forgive us our sins as we have forgiven our debtors. Forgive our debts and trespasses as we have forgiven all those who offend us. This prayer we make through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
as we are reaching to the end of this episode let us thank god for filling us with his word and praise him through the song welcome holy spirit we are in your presence fill us with your power live inside of me Welcome Holy Spirit We are in your presence Fill us with your power Live inside of me Welcome Holy Spirit Let us welcome the Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. to the Lord. Welcome Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome Holy Spirit. with your power, O oh Lord. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me.
I wish you all a day full of joy, peace and divine blessings.